Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So now let's look at the second example for buoyancy. So here we have a partially submerged wood pole is attached to the wall by a hinge as shown here. The pole is in equilibrium under the actions of weight and buoyant force. So we ask to determine the density of the wood. Okay, so if you consider this, so the pole is actually in equilibrium. The moment created by the weight of the pole, which is in the clockwise directions, must be balanced by the moment created by the buoyancy force, which is acting upward, and hence will create an anti-clockwise moment. So let's consider schematic diagram of the problems that we have here. So we have a pole, which is hinged at the end here. The length of the pole is L. And one third of the pole is submerged under the water. Let's say the cross-sectional area of the pole is A. Given that the angle here is equal to 30 degree. So first of all, let's consider all the forces that are acting on the pole. First of all, we will have the buoyancy force. Buoyancy force will be acting at the center of gravity of the displaced volume. So this is the, the displaced volume. So it will be acting in the middle here, and it will be acting directly upward. So I call that one a buoyancy. So whereby, since that distance is equal to L over 3, so this distance here must be equal to L over 6. And this is equal to, F Y C will be equal to rho fluid T multiplied by the displaced volume, where the displaced volume is total volume of this. Then we will have the gravitational force due to the weight. Gravitational force due to the weight will be acting at the centroid of the pole. So the centroid of the pole will be right in the middle here. And will be acting directly downward. That will be equal to mass of the pole multiplied by g. Which is also equal to the density of the pole multiplied by the volume of the pole multiplied by g. Right. And then the distance from there to there that is equal to L over 2. Right. So now the movement about the hinge has to be balanced. So if I take moment about hinge, what I will get is the clockwise moment will be equal to rho pole v pole multiplied by g this, then multiplied by this distance here. So this distance here is equal to L over 2 cos 30. And that will be balanced by the buoyancy force, which I know that is equal to rho fluid t, then v displays, multiply by this distance here. So from there to there is L, and from there to there is L over 6. So from there to there is 5 L over 6 cos 30. So this gives me rho pole multiplied by v pole. V pole will be equal to A multiplied by L multiplied by G multiplied by L over 2 cos 30. And this must be equal to rho fluid G. The displaced volume will be equal to A multiplied by L over 3, then multiply by 5L over 6, cos 30. Then A will 
will cancel. L will cancel. T will cancel. Foster T will also cancel. So we have rho P is equal to five times two divided by three times six rho F. This gives us rho P is equal to five over nine rho F. Okay, so that's now what we did. We balanced the moment about a hinge due to the weight and the moment due to the buoyancy force and that gives us the density of the pole is equal to 5 over 9 density of the fluid. So substituting the value, so rho pole is equal to 5 over 9 divided by 10 to the 3. So that gives us density of the pole is 555.6 kilogram per meter cube. By using the principles of buoyancy, a simple device called hydrometer can be used to measure specific gravity of a liquid or the density of the liquid. So here basically we have a, a container which contains a known amount of mass and known amount of weight. And when this container is put in a liquid where we want to measure the density, the displaced volume will depend on the density of the liquid. So if we consider a hydrometer, so we have a container, and inside container we have a known weight. So the weight, of course, will be acting downward. And this will be balanced by the buoyancy force, which is acting upward. And the value of the buoyancy force will be equal to the density of the fluid T multiplied by displaced volume. And the displaced volume is equal to this volume. So we can actually calibrate the hydrometer by using a few different uh, liquid of known density and we can plot a graph of density of fluid against the space volume. So we will have something like this, right? So once we have obtained this chart, we can use the hydrometer and put it in any liquid that we want to measure the density. And from there, knowing the displaced volume, we can get the density of the liquid.